Family Theater presents Walter Brennan and Natalie Wood. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents A Kind of Treasure, starring Walter Brennan. To introduce the drama, here is your hostess, Natalie Wood. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our drama, A Kind of Treasure, starring Walter Brennan as Mr. Alex. <laughs> Buried treasure. What boy hasn't envisioned himself searching out such a treasure, returning triumphantly home to buy out the candy store? But such dreams don't always perish with childhood. There are those stubborn romantics for whom buried treasure remains a lure throughout their lives. In the midst of their workaday routine, the glittering hoard shines like a beacon light. Such a man was Mr. Alex. And he never tired of talking about the treasures he knew to exist and that one day he would find. Taking a few minutes out from his chores as daytime guard at the First National Bank of Middle Falls, he holds a circle of youngsters in thrall. And so the survivors buried that chest in the golden sands of the cave. All that gold, all those beautiful rubies, sapphires, and emeralds covered over with the sand. And no more had they finished hiding that treasure than they were attacked by a ship in the king's service and every man And as Mr. Alex for... talked of buried so treasure, treasure, sometimes it happened that grown-ups listened too. Grown-ups like me, Jed Marshall, the president of the bank, and a friend of mine from out of town. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the old windbag telling tales about buried treasure, Jed? Oh, that's Mr. Alex. Mr. Alex? Is that his full name? His name's Alex Mahoney, but to everyone in Middle Falls, he's just plain Mr. Alex. Huh. Looks pretty old to be holding down a job as a bank guard. We officially retired, Mr. Alex, five years ago, but he just couldn't stay away from the bank. So we put him back on the payroll part-time. Young Jimmy Owens takes most of the responsibility. He certainly has a way with the story. Look at those kids. Yes, they worship him. But then the whole town does. You never see Mr. Alex without a crowd around him. Funny. People admire an old yarn spinner like him more than they do a hard-working, straight-talking businessman. To folks in this town, Clay, Mr. Alex is more than just a, another yarn spinner. There's not a word of truth in his stories, is there? Well, if you mean has he ever been to the Caribbean searching for pirate gold, the answer is no. That's what I meant. And he's never set out with a burrow into the southwestern mountains looking for a lost gold mine either. You know, in fact, to my knowledge, he's never been further from Middle Falls than Indianapolis. Oh. <laughs> but... Once, Mr. Alex did find buried treasure. He did? Yes, about five years ago. It was time for him to retire. He came into my office one day. And I don't mind telling you, Mr. Marshall, it's going to seem strange not to be coming to work here at the bank. After 35 years, you know, a man gets into a sort of a habit. Well, we'll miss you, Mr. Alex. Of course, it isn't as if you won't be dropping in for a visit now and again. <laughs> well, no, I'm not going to be where I can drop in for a visit. Not for a while, I'm not. Or planning a trip? You bet I am. A trip I've dreamed of taking all my life. Mr. Marshall, I aim to go and search a buried treasure. Buried treasure? <laughs> Where are you going, Mr. Ellie? Well, first I'm going to Key West, Florida, and from there, well, uh, I'm going wherever my intuition leads me. Oh, it sounds like a wonderful vacation. Ah, it's more than that. When me and Carrie was first married, she being the one with the common sense, you know, she talked me into taking out a retirement policy. Seems silly then, me only 25. But now I'm 60 and it's, well, it's going to be right nice to have $5,000 in hand. $5,000? Why, Mr. Alex, you're a wealthy man. Uh, me and Carrie, you know, we were going to take a trip around the world. Many's the evening we spent planning that trip. She was sort of partial to Holland, you see. She'd heard that it was such a clean kind of a country. It's a shame that 
She didn't live to take that trip. Yeah, it is, especially since this policy was her notion. But God took her from me, and, and there's no one else for me to think of now, so I'm using the $5,000 to do what I've always wanted to do. Search for buried treasure. Yes, sir. It'll be a wonderful life. When I get tired of searching the Caribbean, I'll come back to the States and go to Arizona and maybe to Nevada and look for lost gold mines. If that's what you want, Mr. Alex, I'm all for it. Maybe one day you, you'll find one of those treasures. Oh, that's not important. No, no. It's the looking that's going to be the fun. <laughs> of course, if I do turn up a fortune, I ain't going to get mad. <laughs> <laughs> when do you plan to start? On oh, about a week. I got a few things to settle here in Middle Falls before I set out. Well, good luck to you, Mr. Alex. I hope that this trip is everything that you want it to be. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Marshall. I drop in again before I leave. Fine. Now, if there's anything we can do to help you with your plans, you let us know. We all feel a great interest in this treasure hunt of yours. <laughs> Hard for me to believe I'm, I'm really going. <laughs> oh, say, if Julie Farrell's still waiting out there, uh, send her in. Will you? Sure, sure. She's here. How are you, Julie? Pretty good, Mr. Alex. Uh, Mr. Marshall says he can, he can talk with you now. Is, uh, is he in a good mood? Good mood? i never seen Mr. Marshall in any other kind of a mood. Why, Julie? You, you got a favor to ask? A big favor. I, I don't know what I'll do if he can't help me. Well... Oh, what, what, what is it? Maybe You're I could... You're coming in, Julie? Oh, right away, Mr. Marshall. Uh, say, if he can't help you, you just let me know. Thanks, Mr. Alex. I'll let you know. That you, Mr. Alex? Now, who did you think it was going to be, Billy Cahill? Maybe Captain Kidd or Peg Leg Pete? Could have been Dr. Hayes. Oh, the doc coming to see you again, huh? What's the trouble, Billy boy? My back's been hurting me a little, and Mom thought that the doctor better take a look. Oh, the old back again, huh? I thought you and me had agreed that we was going to start feeling stronger. We did, Mr. Alex, and I work at it, but it seems like it doesn't help. Yeah, but working at it is the important thing, Billy. You got a mighty important-looking envelope today. I did? Mom put it over on the piano. Well, no, let's take a look at this important envelope. I thought maybe it was a map for one of those buried treasures. Uh, no, sir, Billy boy, this here's my check from the insurance company. This envelope has the key to all my dreams in it. The key to all your dreams, Mr. Alex? Yes, sir. There it is. Till this minute, Billy, I couldn't rightly believe I had this money coming to me. But this check makes it official. Uh you still going to take the trip, Mr. Alex? I sure am. Oh, I wish I was going with you. Yeah, I wish you was too, Billy boy, but you got to stay here and get well and take care of your mother. Maybe. If I get well, I could join up with you, Mr. Alex. Why, sure. And say, I bet you'll be getting better soon now. And while I'm gone, I'll write to you and tell you everything. I'll tell you everything I see and do. <laughs> Would you? I'm going to miss you, Mr. Alex. Yeah, I'll miss you too, Billy boy. Things have been so much nicer since you came to live here. Mom's going to miss you too. Uh, like as not, your mom can rent my room to someone that'll be a, a sight better influence on a young'un than, than I am with me tall tales. Don't say that. Nobody's going to take your place, Mr. Alex. Nobody. Oh, Mr. Alex, I didn't hear you come in. I thought Billy was talking to himself. <laughs> Evening, Mrs. Cahill. Oh, you found your letter on the piano? I sure didn't, thanks. I suppose that means you'll be leaving us soon. Yeah, in about a week now. Well, it just won't seem right to have someone else in your room. Billy and I have gotten to think of you as one of the family, Mr. Alex. <laughs> that's just the way I feel about you two. <laughs> oh, that's Dr. Hayes. I hope he can give Billy a little relief from that back pain. The doc will make you feel better, Billy. After he goes... Will you come in and tell me a story, Mr. Alex? Yeah, you can just bet I will. That is, if your mom says it's all right. Oh, she will. Your stories are better than the doctor's medicine. What's that, youngster? It's not a very flattering thing to say about your doctor. Oh, no, evening, Doc. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Alex. Have you uh, been undermining the medical profession? <laughs> not guilty. I, I want you to take care of this boy so he'll be strong enough to, uh, to sit through one of my long-winded stories. <laughs> well, I'll do my best. Now then, Billy... Let's take a look at that bag. I'd go out and make sure all the stars are in their proper places. Call me when you're through. Oh, 
hi, Doc. Uh, did you get the boy fixed up? No, oh, I've done all I can. Mr. Alex, could... Could you go in to Billy? He'd like to hear one of your stories. Yeah, sure I will, Mrs. Cahill. What is it, Doc? Is the little fellow worse? Well, he's, he's not going to get any better, Mr. Alex. You mean never? He needs an operation. He should have had it a year ago. The spinal condition is getting worse. Oh, you know, if, if we had a clinic with decent equipment in Middle Falls, my hands wouldn't be tied. Mm. Pretty touchy kind of an operation, is it? Oh, there are only three men in the country qualified to perform it. Hmm. Which cost quite a bit of money. $1,500, I'd say. Maybe more. $1,500. You know, it, it makes me wild to look at a little kid like Billy and know that I can't help him. Know that there are other kids like him in Middle Falls who need help. The money that's wasted on foolishness in this town. Money that could be used to equip a clinic. Give kids like Billy a better break. Hmm. $1,500 is a sight of money. It's a fortune. But I won't give up. I'll keep praying. You pray for us, too, Mr. Alex. God will find a way. I know he will. Sure, Mrs. Cahill. There's an answer. There's bound to be an answer. <laughs> Julie, hey there, Julie Farrell. Why are you clipping off to in such a hurry? Oh, hello, Mr. Alex. You know, this is, this is too pretty a morning for you to be looking so grim and determined. I'm on my way to apply for a job at the mill. A job? And I thought you were going east in, in just a week or so. Didn't you get a scholarship to one of them big New York art schools? Yes, I did, but I, I, I can't accept it. No, that don't make sense. Handy as you are with a brush, it'd be a crying shame for you to pass up such a chance. I haven't any choice. That's why I saw Mr. Marshall yesterday. I, I wanted to borrow some money for my living expenses. Uh, what did Mr. Marshall say? Oh, he wanted to help me, but he couldn't make a loan when I offered no security. I you know, you, you, you've got your talent. Uh, that ought to count for something. Not with a bank. Yeah, I know. Uh, how much of a loan did you, did you need? A thousand dollars, but it's hopeless. Going to Mr. Marshall was my last chance. Oh, yeah, but you, you know, you mustn't lose hope. Mostly it takes a, a good long while to make a dream come true, but, but you got to keep believing. Why, look at me. I've waited 40 years to get what I wanted, and now it's come to me. I'm glad, Mr. Alex. Well, I, I'd better go. I want to put my application in at the mill. I'll see you again, Mr. Alex, and, and thanks for trying to cheer me up. gallant captain said you've never got your 50 hands on this treasure and you know you know what he did billy no what did he do mr alex well sir he grabbed that heavy chest all full of those gold sovereigns and precious jewels and he jumped into the sea he sank without a trace and the pirates didn't get the treasure they certainly did so far as anyone knows that gallant captain is still sitting on the bottom of the caribbean clutching that treasure chest golly maybe you'll find it mr alex uh, maybe i will Mr. Alex! What is it, Billy boy? You're back? Yes. Maybe... Maybe you better call Mom. Mrs. Cahill! Mrs. Cahill! Billy needs you. Coming. You still bothering your boy? It's better now. It sort of comes and goes. What is it? Yeah, Billy had a twinge in his back, but he, he says it's better now. Oh. Here, dear, let me fix the pillars behind you. Thanks, Mom. Mr. Alex has been telling me a swell story oh. about the bravest captain in the king's service. Yeah, I figured it was very appropriate for the bravest boy in Middle Falls. I don't know what he'll do for entertainment after you go. I had a couple of calls on your room today, Mr. Alex. Oh, oh well, uh, don't be in any great hurry to rent my room, Mrs. Cale. Why, nothing's gone wrong, has it? No, no, nothing's wrong. I... You still want to go on that treasure hunt, don't you? Yes, uh, I guess I do. Well, you have your check from the insurance company. I thought everything was all settled. So did I. Um, I, I got a perfect right to do as I please with the money, though. Who says you haven't? Well, I satisfied myself with my dreaming for most of my life. It looks like I should be entitled to make you know, some of them come true. Who's trying to cheat you out of your trip, Mr. Alex? Nobody's trying to cheat me. <laughs> I, guess I, I guess I'm... I don't know. I guess I'm getting cold feet at the last minute. Worries me what other folks must think. 
Now, Mr. Alex, that money is yours, and you should use it as you please. I wouldn't let anyone else come between you and what you want. Well, I, I guess that makes sense. Uh, I got to think of myself first, you know, <laughs> of myself then. Come in, Mr. Alex, come in. Well, I suppose it's time to say bon voyage. Everything all set for your big adventure? Mr. Marshall, uh, you know, I've already had my big adventure. And I haven't come to say goodbye. I'm here to... to ask for my job back. Oh, uh, wait a minute. That, that went too fast for me. Sit down. Thank you. Now, let's approach this more slowly, shall we? Uh, I'm not going to Key West to search for buried treasure. I've changed my plan. But I don't understand. The last time we talked, Mr. Alex, that was what you wanted above all else. I guess you might say that I've, I've had my eyes open since we had our little talk, and, and I've discovered that there's other treasures to be turned up right here in Middle Falls. I see. Instead of spending that money traipsing all over the world looking for lost treasures, I'm going to use it right here. Uh... In what way, Mr. Alex? Well, I, I'm going to see that little Billy Cahill has that spinal operation he needs. You know, Doc Hayes figures it'll cost about 1,500 bucks for the operation and special care afterwards. Oh, that's a wonderful thing, Mr. Alex. But look, you, you could still have your trip with $3,500. Oh, hold on, hold on, Mr. Marshall. I know the bank had its own good reasons for turning down Julie Farrell's application for a loan, but... Well, uh... I want to tell you something about that. I, I regretted that. But you see, I couldn't possibly make the loan when, well, she had no security to offer you. Yeah, I, I know. Her, her talents, though, is security enough for me. And I wanted to have $1,500 so, so she can take that scholarship and learn to be a fine artist. Oh. And I suppose you've already made up your mind about uh, the remaining $2,000? Well, you know, I, I, I've been thinking about, about Doc Hayes. Now, there's a man that works 18, 20 hours a day trying to keep folks here feeling good, and lots of the time he puts in at, at the clinic, too, for free. Yes, I know that. Yes, Middle Falls is certainly lucky to have a man like Doc Hayes. But we ought to do more than just congratulate ourselves, you know. We, we ought to show him that, well, that we're with him. The doctor needs equipment to fight disease, and equipment costs money. Now, I'm, I'm putting up $2,000 toward new equipment for the clinic, and, well, uh, I do hope there'll be some prominent citizens take the hint. Mr. Alex, there certainly will be. You have my promise on that. Well, uh, that's the way it's going to be. Give me a lot more satisfaction than digging for a lot of buried treasure. You know, I'm getting too old for that sort of thing anyway. Mr. Alex... I always have envied you. You envied me? And never more than right at this very moment. Well, <laughs> no, that's real nice of you, Mr. Marshall. Oh, by the way, uh, can I have my job back? I'll make you proud of me, Mr. Alex. Uh, I'm proud of you already, Julie. I... I know what you've given up to help me go to school. I haven't given up anything. Why, every picture you paint, I can feel that I've had a little share in it, you see. I'd be getting paid back all the rest of my life. Since the word of your donation got out, Mr. Alex, I I've had $7,500 pledged toward the clinic. It looks like we're really in business. Well, it's about time this town gave you something more than just a pat on the back, Doc. <laughs> uh, you deserve the credit. Say, how about calling this the Mr. Alex Clinic? Oh, no, no, you don't. No, not that. You know, this is your project. I'm, I'm just a dad, just a kibitzer. All that I ask is to see that the kids in this town are getting stronger and healthy every day. You scared, Billy boy? Oh, gosh, no, Mr. Alex. Mom says this is one of the best doctors in the world. Oh, well, that's right, son, he is. Guess I'll have a few stories to tell you when this is over. Yeah, you bet you will. And I'd be anxious to hear them, too. You're not going treasure hunting after all? I found my treasure, Billy, right in Middle Falls. Treasure? In Middle Falls? That's right, Sonny. And it wasn't very deep at all, at all. <laughs>
And that's how Mr. Alex found his buried treasure. That's quite a story. Julie Farrell is one of the most promising young artists in the country now. Last year, she won a big prize with a portrait of Mr. Alex. And was he proud? What about the boy? Billy Cahill? He was the star quarterback in the football team this year. Every time he carried the ball, you should have seen Mr. Alex's face. And the old fellow still dreams about buried treasures? Oh, yes. Just waiting there for some smart hombre to come along and pick it up. Yes, sir, a real treasure. One kind of treasure, leastways, you know. There's all kinds, you know. <laughs> Me? Why, I figured I stumbled onto the most precious treasure of all. <laughs> Natalie Wood again. You know, we're all affected by the surroundings around us, by what we see and hear, by the example of others, and that's especially true in a home. If there's always a kind and encouraging word, we can't help but think bright and cheerful thoughts. And you know something? Those who are close to God are best able to be happy and cheerful. When you know that God is ready and able to help you, you can be confident about the future because you know your faith and trust in Him will always bring His help. And that's why, when a family joins together in, family, in daily family prayer, they can be sure of happiness in their home. Yes, pray together as a family every day, for prayer brings peace. A prayerful home is a peaceful home, and the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you A Kind of Treasure, starring Walter Brennan as Mr. Alex. Natalie Wood was your hostess. Others in our cast were Vivi Janis, Loni Blackman, Pat McGeehan, Francis Urie, Jim Nusser, and David Duvall. The script was written for Family Theater by John McGreevy, with music composed by Harry Zimmerman and conducted by Seymour Kramer, and was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This series of family theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lafrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when Family Theater will present Spunky, starring Jeffrey Hunter, Barbara Rush, and Mel Blank. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.